Welcome to the One Year Bible, June 25. The Old Testament reading, 2 Kings chapter 8, verse 1 through chapter 9, verse 13. Elisha had told the woman whose son he had brought back to life, Take your family and move to some other place, for the Lord has called for a famine on Israel that will last for seven years. So the woman did as the man of God instructed. She took her family and settled in the land of the Philistines for seven years. After the famine ended, she returned from the land of the Philistines, and she went to see the king about getting back her house and land. As she came in, the king was talking with Gehazi, the servant of the man of God. The king had just said, Tell me some stories about the great things Elisha has done. And Gehazi was telling the king about the time Elisha had brought a boy back to life. At that very moment, the mother of the boy walked in to make her appeal to the king about her house and land. Look, my lord the king, Gehazi exclaimed, here is the woman now, and this is her son, the very one Elisha brought back to life. Is this true? the king asked her, and she told him the story. So he directed one of his officials to see that everything she had lost was restored to her, including the value of any crops that had been harvested during her absence. Elisha went to Damascus, the capital of Aram, where King Ben-Hadad lay sick. When someone told the king that the man of God had come, the king said to Haziel, Take a gift to the man of God, then tell him to ask the Lord, Will I recover from this illness? So Haziel loaded down 40 camels with the finest products of Damascus as a gift for Elisha. He went to him and said, Your servant Ben-Hadad, the king of Aram, has sent me to ask, Will I recover from this illness? And Elisha replied, Go and tell him, you will surely recover. But... Actually, the Lord has shown me that he will surely die. Elisha stared at Haziel with a fixed gaze until Haziel became uneasy. Then the man of God started weeping. What's the matter, my Lord? Haziel asked him. Elisha replied, I know the terrible things you will do to the people of Israel. You will burn their fortified cities, kill their young men with the sword, dash their little children to the ground, and rip open their pregnant women. Haziel responded, How could a nobody like me ever accomplish such great things? Elisha answered, The Lord has shown me that you are going to be the king of Aram. When Haziel left Elisha and went back, The king asked him, What did Elisha tell you? And Haziel replied, He told me that you will surely recover. But the next day, Haziel took a blanket, soaked it in water, and held it over the king's face until he died. Then Haziel became the next king of Aram. Jehoram, son of King Jehoshaphat of Judah, began to rule over Judah in the fifth year of the reign of Joram, son of Ahab, king of Israel. Jehoram was 32 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem eight years. But Jehoram followed the example of the kings of Israel and was as wicked as King Ahab, for he had married one of Ahab's daughters. So Jehoram did what was evil in the Lord's sight. But the Lord did not want to destroy Judah, for he had promised his servant David that his descendants would continue to rule, shining like a lamp forever. During Jehoram's reign, the Edomites revolted against Judah and crowned their own king. So Jehoram went with all his chariots to attack the town of Zaire. The Edomites surrounded him and his chariot commanders, but he went out at night and attacked them under cover of darkness. But Jehoram's army deserted him and fled to their homes. So Edom has been independent from Judah to this day. The town of Libna also revolted about that same time. 
The rest of the events in Jehoram's reign and everything he did are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Judah. When Jehoram died, he was buried with his ancestors in the city of David. Then his son Ahaziah became the next king. Ahaziah, son of Jehoram, began to rule over Judah in the twelfth year of the reign of Joram, son of Ahab, king of Israel. Ahaziah was twenty-two years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem one year. His mother was Athaliah, a granddaughter of King Omri of Israel. Ahaziah followed the evil example of King Ahab's family. He did what was evil in the Lord's sight, just as Ahab's family had done, for he was related by marriage to the family of Ahab. Ahaziah joined Joram, son of Ahab, in his war against King Heziel of Aram at Ramoth-Gilead. When the Arameans wounded King Joram in the battle, he returned to Jezreel to recover from the wounds he had received at Ramoth. Because Joram was wounded, King Ahaziah of Judah went to Jezreel to visit him. Meanwhile, Elisha the prophet had summoned a member of the group of prophets. Get ready to travel, he told him, and take this flask of olive oil with you. Go to Ramoth Gilead and find Jehu son of Jehoshaphat, son of Nimshi. Call him into a private room away from his friends and pour the oil over his head. Say to him, This is what the Lord says. I anoint you to be the king over Israel. Then open the door and run for your life. So the young prophet did as he was told and went to Ramoth Gilead. When he arrived there, he found Jehu sitting around with the other army officers. I have a message for you, commander, he said. For which one of us? Jehu asked. For you, commander, he replied. So Jehu left the others and went into the house. Then the young prophet poured the oil over Jehu's head and said, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I anoint you king over the Lord's people, Israel. You are to destroy the family of Ahab, your master. In this way I will avenge the murder of my prophets and all the Lord's servants who were killed by Jezebel. The entire family of Ahab must be wiped out. I will destroy every one of his male descendants, slave and free alike, anywhere in Israel. I will destroy the family of Ahab, as I destroyed the families of Jeroboam son of Nebat and of Baasha son of Ahijah. Dogs will eat Ahab's wife Jezebel at the plot of land in Jezreel, and no one will bury her. Then the young prophet opened the door and ran. Jehu went back to his fellow officers, and one of them asked him, What did that madman want? Is everything all right? You know how a man like that babbles on, Jehu replied. You're hiding something, they said. Tell us. So Jehu told them, He said to me, This is what the Lord says. I have anointed you to be the king over Israel. Then they quickly spread out their cloaks on the bare steps and blew the ram's horn, shouting, Jehu is king! The New Testament reading, Acts chapter 16, verses 16 through 40. One day, as we, Luke, Paul, and their companions, were going down to the place of prayer, We met a slave girl who had a spirit that enabled her to tell the future. She earned a lot of money for her masters by telling fortunes. She followed Paul and the rest of us, shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God, and they have come to tell you how to be saved. This went on day after day until Paul got so exasperated that he turned and said to the demon within her, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And instantly it left her. Her master's hopes of wealth were now shattered, so they grabbed Paul and Silas and dragged them before the authorities at the marketplace. The whole city is in an uproar because of these Jews, they shouted to the city officials. 
They are teaching customs that are illegal for us Romans to practice. A mob quickly formed against Paul and Silas, and the city officials ordered them stripped and beaten with wooden rods. They were severely beaten, and then they were thrown into prison. The jailer was ordered to make sure they didn't escape, so the jailer put them into the inner dungeon and clamped their feet in the stocks. Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening. Suddenly, there was a massive earthquake, and the prison was shaken to its foundations. All the doors immediately flew open, and the chains of every prisoner fell off. The jailer woke up to see the prison doors wide open. He assumed the prisoners had escaped, so he drew his sword to kill himself. But Paul shouted to him, Stop! Don't kill yourself! We are all here! The jailer called for lights and ran to the dungeon and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, along with everyone in your household. And they shared the word of the Lord with him and with all who lived in his household. Even at that hour of the night, the jailer cared for them and washed their wounds. Then he and everyone in his household were immediately baptized. He brought them into his house and set a meal before them and he and his entire household rejoiced because they all believed in God. The next morning, the city official sent the police to tell the jailer, Let those men go. So the jailer told Paul, The city officials have said you and Silas are free to leave. Go in peace. But Paul replied, They have publicly beaten us without a trial and put us in prison. And we are Roman citizens, so now they want us to leave secretly? Certainly not. Let them come themselves to release us. When the police reported this, the city officials were alarmed to learn that Paul and Silas were Roman citizens. So they came to the jail and apologized to them. Then they brought them out and begged them to leave the city. When Paul and Silas left the prison, they returned to the home of Lydia. There they met with the believers and encouraged them once more. Then they left town. Psalm 143, verses 1 through 12. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my plea. Answer me because you are faithful and righteous. Don't put your servant on trial, for no one is innocent before you. My enemy has chased me. He has knocked me to the ground and forces me to live in darkness like those in the grave. I am losing all hope. I am paralyzed with fear. I remember the days of old. I ponder all your great works and think about what you have done. I lift my hands to you in prayer. I thirst for you as parched land thirsts for rain. Come quickly, Lord, and answer me, for my depression deepens. Don't turn away from me, or I will die. Let me hear of your unfailing love each morning, for I am trusting you. Show me where to walk, for I give myself to you. Rescue me from my enemies, Lord. I run to you to hide me. Teach me to do your will for you are my God. May your gracious Spirit lead me forward on a firm footing. For the glory of your name, O Lord, preserve my life. Because of your faithfulness, bring me out of this distress. In your unfailing love, silence all my enemies and destroy all my foes. For I am your servant. Proverbs 17, 
verse 26. It is wrong to punish the godly for being good or to flog leaders for being honest.